Japanese launched a satellite a couple of years ago, um, Akari. Uh, we're now seeing the first data coming out from Akari. It's very much like IRS. Just it's, it's that fact it's ident almost identical to the IRS mission, except the detectors are 20 years later and much, much more sensitive. Uh, but uh, we, we don't have access to the data. There's not much I can show you. I can show you their website and get a few pictures. So the near future, which means funded, in fact, we just launched um, Herschel and Planck, and we're about to get Sophia going, which I'll mention briefly as well. Uh, here's Herschel. So this, is my, my, this has been my focus of my work since I started working in 1998, and I was just about the last person of a major people into it, you know, involved. Uh, I'm the Canadian PI for this mission. Um, we've got uh, uh, 17 countries, 35 institutions involved, um, and we launched last May the 14th, which is all very exciting, and, and uh, there's a, a still doing publicity things with it, and every time we have another big result, uh, it's, uh, we get a lot more PR for it. But at the moment, I have the problem. I've got so much data that's so much more complicated than we thought, and, and which is exciting. Um, you know, don't do these things to see what you expected to see. Uh, and it's what they say, all the unexpected things. But everything that's coming out is, in fact, everything's coming out much stronger than we expected, much hotter than we expected. We're seeing like a thousand degree water vapor, where you know, steam, where we expect to find hundred degree, and, and that we don't know where the energy is coming from. They heat it up so much, and it's all kind of neat. Uh, sitting down in here. Right about there is the box made here in Waterloo. Oh, well, science objectives, uh, astrochemistry, water, formation of galaxies. Oh, yeah, formation of galaxies, formation of uh, clusters of galaxies, formation of stars and planets. Uh, those are the main goals, especially to use water for all these things, because, of course, you can't see water from the ground. Um, but, uh, and then there's three instruments on Herschel, a camera, a long wavelength camera, a short wavelength camera, with some spectroscopic people. I don't think this spectroscope cuts very much, although a really good buddy of mine is in charge of the data rush. He's really excited. But this one, I'm actually doing a lot of stuff with its data. But this is my instrument. I'm part of a large international team, 15 institutions involved with HiFi, uh, high resolution instrument for far infrared. Uh, so this is a very high spectral resolution. This is a thing you study molecules in space with. So uh, I'm involved in that. And uh, we built this box. It's about this big. I've never touched it. I won't let me touch it. <laughs> I tried to make a leaf on the side, and they said, too late, you have to do that three years in advance because you have to get all the stuff about the quality of the paint. One of the things that you don't appreciate in space is that there's no air. No, no, that seems silly, okay? But when you build electronics in space, a lot of the components, like the solder, has volatile things in it. And when you're in space and there's no air, um, that stuff just comes off, and you know, anything that's warm, like your electronics, and goes and sits on anything that's cold, like the window into the cryostat where you're keeping your instruments cold. And, and, and it uh, coats it and blocks all the radiation from going in. Also, the fact that there's no air, this is a solid box of electronics. There's not very much gap in here, but there's nothing to cool it down. So we worry about this thing melting. You know, things in here break, and little components, capacitors, resistors, all you know, getting fried. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a huge issue. There's no air to take away the heat. So getting rid of the heat is a huge, huge issue. So we've got all kinds of things that you can't see out there, but things that take you know, uh, heat pipes to take the heat out. There's actually 14 channels. This is like the tuner on the radio. Hi-Fi is like a radio. It's a radio type device. The other two are cameras that more optical type devices. This is more like a radio. Um, it's a camera dotting instrument, very much like a radio. It's a 14 band radio, seven different radio bands in two different polarizations. So that's why there's 14 outputs across the top here. Um, and it's a radio, and we built the tuner. Um, uh, I, we didn't actually build it on campus. I had it built just down here in south of the 401 in, in Cambridge, uh, a company called Comdev. Um, and uh, but I, I was in charge of this particular box, the two conversions to use the same box. Uh, and it's really heavy. And, uh, but they wouldn't really put the maple leaf on because the paint had to be non volatile, had to meet various standards that the European Space Agency had to approve in advance. And you had to give them two years' notice and things like that. So we never got a maple leaf on the side, which is disappointing. But that's okay. I think it's all too late. So, uh, oh yeah, how, I was going to say, how does it work? I've actually got a video from um, the principal investigators for HiFi, which is the, the Dutch space institute. So this is Space Research Organization of the Netherlands. Um, so it's, uh, this was actually made just before the launch, so we have some, some um, stuff for, for press materials. And uh, you can see us launching a uh, Herschel right there. And uh, down in there, is, they say that's high five, but that's their part of high five. 
There's five other parts about the same size, but that's the Dutch part, so they call that R5. And it uh, goes off to, well, here's the moon's orbit down here. We're way beyond the moon. We're at the L2 point. So we're in orbit with the Earth. It's a special unstable Lagrangian point. We want to be in an unstable point because the stable points are filled with dust because they're stable, so things that go into there stay there. It's a very dirty environment. So you go to an unstable point. So here's radiation coming from space. It's fed into the instrument, the, the focal plane that the Dutch made, and it's some you know, high frequency terahertz, two terahertz frequency. This is my signal coming in. I built that box, it brings this in, and it gets mixed down here, and uh, actually there's a mixer. Uh, it, gets, it gets combined, uh, and what comes out of the mixer, the high frequency goes in, and the low frequency that we can digitally detect comes out the other side. And, uh, Digital detectors are built with those two of the sets, one by, by group in Germany and one built by group in France. Um, the control box for all of this down here is built in Poland and fried shortly after launch, the first part of it, so we're now on the redundant side. It wasn't their fault. They used correct components. It was, I'm not supposed to say this out loud, so don't repeat this. It was Italian software. <laughs> the problem is that the telescope was put into a weird control state. Every two days, three days, we get hit by a cosmic ray that causes a bit to flip in the memory of the computer, and uh, the telescope has to be able to recover, and it didn't. So now we fixed that uh, instead of software. We had a German and Dutch group write new software to replace the Italian software, and uh, now it works. Uh, this uh, is another thing you can do, is you can fly your instruments at very high altitude, uh, even higher than you can get on pilot top of the highest mountain. And this is a project that was cancelled in um, 2003. It was a joint project between NASA and the German Space Agency. And this is a hole, right? Here is a hole inside the telescope, inside the, the plane. Um, they actually cut the entire jumbo jet and rebuilt it. And uh, there's a telescope sitting out there. Um, and uh, when NASA quit, they had, uh, the Germans said, well, Fine, you know, we'll go it on our own, and according to our agreement we have with you, uh, whoever, if anybody leaves, they lose ownership of anything they put into the project. We'll keep, you know, everything. And the American contribution, most of it, was the jet, and they already contributed the jet. The Germans said, fine, give us the jet, because you've already built it, it's ours now. And so the NASA came back after about 16 months, 18 months of negotiations, said, okay, we're still in the project. Um, but it still hasn't had its first science flight. It's having its test flights right now. It's actually had test flights for about a year. Uh, and uh, they're still trying to get some bugs out of uh, keeping it stabilized up here at this. It turns out the airstream pass through here is very, very uniform, so that's not a problem. But they're having some vibration problems somewhere in there still. Um, just a standard problem to have these kinds of instruments. So what's in the future? That's, that's the near future. That one's going to be flying very, very soon. Uh, what do we want to do? Well, what do we need beyond why we have Herschel? You know, it's great to be operating for at least three years before it runs out of helium. Uh, so uh, we do want to know what we're going to do after that. Uh, we'd like to find uh, satellite use satellites that use the wavelengths and frequencies that we can't get from the ground, first of all. We want to try to get high resolution. ALMA, that ground-based huge interferometer, has fantastic, fantastic resolution. It can really see tiny detail. Um, and maybe we'd like to try and match that in the slightly shorter wavelengths into the far infrared on the Canto. We'd like much higher sensitivity, and again, seven or eight years away at least before we have a detector you could use for doing science, but we've got a really, really cool, of course somebody else might have a secret scheme too, but we have a secret scheme that really is, is amazing, and I can't tell you about it, but it's uh, great. Uh, and the other thing you can do is you can make things colder. The detectors are already as cold as they're going to get, they're down to you know, a few tens of millite. Uh, but you can make the telescopes colder because the telescopes emit into the into the satellite, into the electric, into the detectors and the instruments. Uh, so if you can make the entire telescope colder, you can reduce the emission. And we'd also like to have higher resolution spectroscopy in space. We already get this kind of resolving power. Uh, that's the, the, the resolving uh, wavelength over divided by the wavelength. Uh, if you want, uh, if you want to be able to resolve one part in ten to the fifth of the wavelength and have very fine resolution. In that sense, too. We, we get that with Herschel, but we need to make sure we get that with the new ones as well. 